Hi guys, so I'm going back to the main stage for musical theatre tutorials today and we're going to move on to aliases. Now aliases is a great way to reduce your RAM and your CPU usage on uh, concerts, uh, busy concerts, full concerts, um, they're best for, but you can use them in just about any concert to make things a bit simpler. They do take a lot longer to uh, set up than maybe the traditional way, but you're going to feel that benefit when you're performing it uh, in the long run. So basically an alias is a copy of a channel strip, a patch or a set, uh, but it's not a straight copy. It doesn't copy uh, everything over to create its own sort of strip or patch. It is a reference to that original one. You change the original one, it changes the reference. You change anything in the reference one, it changes the original one. Yeah, um, That's the way it works, that's the way it makes things simpler because you don't have to run more than one plugin at a time for the same sound. So say you have a concert that had a lot of string sounds in, which is quite a few musical theatre parts where you have a lot of strings, you will have more than one instance of EXS24 running that string patch. That is unnecessary in this scenario because we can have one patch that is that string sound and all of the others can be references to that original string patch, that original channel strip that we're using. And that's really going to help the load uh, on your laptop and your computer when you're performing. Another thing it's great for is if you were unsure about a sound. You're programming a show, you're programming a concert, a gig, uh, and you're unsure about the sound you've created, whether that's what you want final uh, in, in the concert. But you have a few of them, uh, and you don't want to have to go through and change them all every time you change your mind about that sound. Have an original one, run all the others as aliases, and when you change that original one, it will change all the others. That's a really quick way to, to just make things easier and just speed up your workflow. So we're gonna have a look at main stage uh, in just a minute and see how these work. But to start off, you're best to create some sort of a sound folder. Now this can be a set at the bottom of your main stage concert that will contain categories of sounds as patches. So um, as we're gonna see in a minute, I've got a sounds folder with a patch called keys. In that keys patch, I'll have channel strips for piano, electric piano, organ, clav, whatever it is I'm going to be using that are in the keys category. They will all be in that one patch and they will all be the originals that I'll be using to create the aliases. And it's just it just helps because they're all there, they're all in that folder at the bottom and you know where the originals are. You're not wondering about, oh is this an alias, is this the original? They're all down there at the bottom for you to find really easily. So let's have a, a look, let's get into main stage and we'll see how these work. Right, so we're back into main stage now. I've got this concert set up uh, just to show you some of the features of the aliases. Uh, I've got my folder at the bottom here, as I was explaining before, your sounds folder. And in this folder, I've got a patch called Keys. That patch has some channel strips for each sort of sound uh, that might be in the Keys category in my, uh, in my concert. So if I was to solo that classic EP sound, um, because they're all stacked up, if you were to just play with this keys patch, you'd have all the sounds. So I'm just selling the classic EP. Uh, we've also got what we've got here, a wah cla. That's uh, analog lab there that I've got set up. So there, and then you've got the same for strings. And with strings, I've got full strings, pizzicato strings, synths, uh, woodwinds, etc. Now let's set up an alias for this Steinway patch. Uh, Steinway piano, that's, that's going to be quite common in a, in a show programming situation. That sort of piano sound. So if we select this strip, and I'm just going to do a Command C to copy. Now, the shortcut for uh, uh, pasting as an alias, just take this out of this folder, create a new patch. I'll name this Steinway. And I'm going to press Option Command V or Alt Command V. And that pastes that channel strip into that patch. Steinway. And we've got it. There it is. It's there. It works. 
uh, it plays, but if you notice this little symbol at the top here, usually when we've got a patch, say we just set up a standard channel strip here with the Steinway piano, you notice it doesn't have it there. This is an original channel strip that we've just created with its own instance of the plugin. But this original one here is being alias, it's an alias, it's been referenced to this strip here. And we do anything to this strip um, and it will do it to the alias. So if we were to, for whatever reason, turn off EXS24, you'll notice in the Steinway that's now turned off. We turn it back on, it's back on. They're linked. Everything this way, um, so all these plugins will all be affected in the alias. Um, the only things that, that aren't affected uh, are the layer editor and the MIDI input settings and you can change the volume and the pan and everything but anything to do with the plugins audio effects, MIDI, MIDI effects, uh, the send IOs and the outputs will be affected in the alias. So that's one way of doing it, you can uh, Alt Command V and it will paste it as an alias. The other option is to go in here and uh, Sorry, not in here. Go into edit, paste as alias, and it will uh, it's actually paste the second one there, but it that's the other way of doing it. The shortcuts are easier, you can get through things a lot quicker. So that's the basics of an alias, that's how to set it up. Uh, say you've set this up and you actually let's get rid of this second one here, and you actually want to change this but not have it affect any of the others or the original one. Select your channel strip. Go into the gear icon here and convert the alias to original. And you'll notice this little symbol goes away and we're back to a Steinway setting. Now this will not affect our original. We've turned it off there, it's still on here. So this is brand new, we can do whatever we want with it and it won't affect the others. And that's great because if you get to a situation where you've got a concert full of these aliases and you need to change one thing, you don't want to have to redo everything, you can just convert that one alias to an original and you're sorted, you're good to go. Now there are a few handy shortcuts uh, that you can use here uh, when you've got the aliases set up um, to really help you uh, just speed up your workflow again. Um, let's create another alias, let's say we want this Matrix 12 patch, we're going to copy, create a new patch and we're going to Command Alt V. And there we are, we've got our alias. Now, if we had a concert full of patches here, but we want to find where the original for this is. Uh, we obviously know where it is because it's in this folder, but if we have a lot of originals and you don't want to keep going through them, there's a little handy shortcut, Command R. If we press Command R, it actually jumps to the original there, it goes straight to the original, and we don't have to go leafing through things and finding them all. Um, they're just there, ready to go. That's really handy. Great. Um, other things you can use aliases for, you can use them for audio uh, channels, strips, auxiliary channel strips, external instrument channel strips. Uh, I'm going to do a video uh, shortly on uh, setting up external instruments uh, with my Nord here. Um, they can all use it. And as I said before, you can use them at the patch level, you can use them at the set level. So we're copying here. Um, I've copied an alias of the alias originals folder. Um, and you'll notice that when you create an alias, if we go into here, since this is actually 124 and a half megabytes. Uh, that's how much it's using. Um, but you notice when we copy the alias over, it's actually zero. And that's that's how you know it's an alias. That's how you know it's not using any data, it's just referencing back to that original channel strip. Um, so they're really helpful and uh, I hope you I hope this helps and I hope you get into using them uh, to really speed up your workflow and make performance so much easier. Thanks, I'll see you next time.